guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be filming a book review for The Bells by Daniel Clayton. So the premise for this book is pretty original as far as I'm concerned. The book is set in a sort of New Orleans francophone type of inspired world and in this world people are all born gray so without color and kind of ugly and there are a few people called the bells that are young beautiful women with the power to transform others appearance to their own liking this transformation isn't permanent and the kind of color and changes that they add to a person's appearance will eventually disappear again so people kind of uh, under this constant pressure to be able to like afford going to the bells and to go there like constantly kind of to um, kind of stay on trend and stay beautiful because as with our world um, when you can change something about yourself this quickly there are certain trends that happen there's fashions to follow and people are always like striving to be like the trendsetter that like inspires the next big thing. In this book we follow one of the bells called Camelia Beauregard. She and her uh, five, I think, fellow bell sisters have just kind of completed a training to be bells and they're now going to um, present their skills to the kingdom because based upon this presentation they will be chosen to go to a specific place in this world kind of to fulfill their purpose. The most wanted position is that of the favorite that gets to go to the court and be the queen's own personal bell. As things develop in the story, Camellia starts to realize that things aren't all that they seem to be, that there is a dark side to being a bell, that there's a dark side to this world and she um, kind of has to make a decision as to where her loyalties lie and what kind of a bell she wants to be. So that's kind of it for the plot. I don't want to give anything more away than that because I think everything else would kind of constitute a bit of a spoiler. So we'll just leave it at that. But I will say overall, I think that the idea behind this book was great. I think that the message that it's trying to send is um, admirable and necessary. It kind of takes the beauty obsession of our society and takes it on the next level to the absurd where people are actually altering their bodies. Just imagine it would become kind of common for us to go to a plastic surgeon like every three months to change everything about our bodies and faces and whatever. Like, that is absurd. But it's also something that I think many people are already kind of doing, maybe to a lesser extent, but still. Um, and I think, especially with this book being obviously directed at a younger readership, I think it's definitely an important message to send that that's like, not not all it's cracked up to be, that being beautiful isn't everything and then there's often a very high price to pay for the elusive concept of beauty. Beyond that, however, I felt like the execution of this novel was severely lacking. The book is over 400 pages long and it really dragged on. There was very little plot to constitute such a long book and I felt overall like opportunities to take the story certain places were missed and also the main character kind of felt like she was drifting along in the story and not really influencing events in any way that she could so overall I was quite disappointed with the book. I think it could have been taken a lot further and it could have delved into a lot more grittiness but I felt like in regards to the dark side behind beauty, uh, the book didn't go far enough for me. But let's talk about a few more specifics first. So one of my biggest issues with this book definitely was the world building or should I say lack thereof. I felt like there was a huge disconnect between explanations of the world and how it worked and what the bells were and how what their function and place in society was exactly and the description of things that you could visually see. Especially in the first third of the book, we are completely buried under descriptions of things that surround the events that we are watching. The objects and people that exist in this world are often described in such detail and it always involves bright colors, fancy fabrics, like textures and this and that and it all felt extremely overwhelming to me especially because 
after like a page or two you were able to tell like okay everything is just gonna be pretty and colorful and like that's what that is going for I, I don't need to have such detailed explanations of every tiny thing that exists in this world especially since they're all just appearance related. At the beginning it actually felt like I was just constantly being forced to bite into a too sweet candy that just like clogs up your nose and mouth and all your senses and it just like felt so heavy and like just too much sweetness. On the flip side, things like objects that exist in the world that don't exist in our world and that you maybe wouldn't like intuitively guess the meaning of were not really describe that well or at all. There are several things that constantly appear in the story that you kind of can guess at the like meaning of and whatnot and the shape maybe even but like not fully understand them like where did they come from what is it what exactly does it look like. I would have much more appreciated descriptions of those things than just like oh what this dress looks like and what this like decoration looks like. What I'm talking about here are things like blimps, teacup animals, and post balloons. I mean, I guess you can, again, you can sort of imagine maybe something when hearing those words, especially when they keep appearing in certain contexts, but it's really hard to have an, a clear image of what they're supposed to be in your mind when you're reading the book. And for me, it took away from the reading experience because I was constantly thinking, about what those things could be. Like, I don't want to be taken out of the story to have to try and piece together an image of like what this thing is. That keeps appearing. It's not like these are things that were mentioned once and then forgotten about. Also, there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of beautifying montages, especially in the beginning of the book, um, where the bells are altering people and they like explain in crazy detail what exactly they're doing to this person and I felt like that was introduced a little too early in the story because at that point I didn't even really know what the bells even were. I mean if you throw one or two in that's fine but I don't need to read about every single transformation that they perform on a person. Like it just, I just skipped those parts because they, they grew so tedious to me. Overall I just kind of felt like this balance between superficial descriptions and actual meaningful explanations was so off and that's just so ironic for a book that is this overtly critical of like outward appearance. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the plot again as I've already mentioned I felt like there was very little of it um, to justify this book being so extremely long. Again, with the beautifying montages and descriptions and just like back and forth of characters that it wasn't really meaningful and didn't really contribute much to the story, it felt like the actual plot was just so watered down and like so dragged out that it was really hard to keep me interested. Most of the things that I really cared about which are very few anyway, but they all kind of happen in literally like the last 50 pages or so. Uh, I was interested at the beginning because obviously you're like interested in this world, whatever. Then I lost interest until the last 50 pages. So I don't think that that's really um, <laughs> the intention with any book. But again, because so little was happening throughout the book, the ending came kind of a little bit as a surprise or like it just things started happening too quickly all of a sudden that could have been done like could have been better paced throughout the book, in my opinion. Next, I want to talk about the main character, Camellia. Camellia, I don't know how to say her name. Beauregard. She was also really frustrating to read about, mainly because she's such a naive girl and literally never questions anything. There were lots of moments in the book where I felt like literally every single red flag in existence was being raised and the girl was just like, oh, let's just keep doing this because I'm sure nothing can go wrong and I'm like holy shit girl turn on your common sense please I also felt like she was made out to be this sort of troublemaker and rule breaker in the beginning but never really through her actions again just through descriptions of her which if you know anything about me you know that's one of my most like my one of my biggest pet peeves and her own actions really contradicted that description like she never really broke any rules that I could see um, maybe she did but they were really negligible in my eyes and then the cases where she should have taken action and should have stood up for herself or someone else or and like should have broken a rule and not followed directions she didn't 
Like, the moments when it really mattered, she would do exactly as she was told, and it was super frustrating. Also, since she's the narrator of the book, she's the one to tell us about the bells and the world that they live in and things like that. And at the beginning, you get very little information on how the bells work and live and how that entire thing functions. So I was already a little bit miffed that we didn't get to know more about that from the start because I think that's like one of the most interesting parts of the book and like one of the most intriguing parts. But I just thought, okay, I mean, maybe this is done for intrigue and she's going to reveal this a little bit later as the story progresses, you know, how you don't want to info dump all the things. But I was waiting this entire book for Camellia to like start and uh, tell us things. <laughs> and then I realized the reason she didn't is because she herself has no actual idea how the bells work and how they live and what they do and like all of the intricacies of their lives. She has no idea and literally everything that we find out about that comes as a surprise to her as well. That for me was what broke the camel's back in terms of her naivety. Like. She seriously has never once asked any of the most obvious questions about her own life? Girl, <laughs> you need to get your shit together. That is not okay. She doesn't know anything. She is very, again, assuming only good things about everything. And she's just like, I don't know this, but like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Yeah, definitely, definitely not completely fucked up in every single way, but no, sure it's fine. Like, I think it's one thing not to be interested in, like, I don't know, politics or whatever, like, things that don't relate to you, but it's literally your own life. How have you never thought about this at all? And again, coming back to her inactivity, I felt like she was uh, always making the wrong decisions, and actually, oftentimes, she just wouldn't make any decisions and just kind of waited things out, like... Maybe something, she would see something happening that she thought was unjust or mean or like bad and she would think like, oh, I should stop this. This can't be happening. This is so wrong. And then she would think that for long enough until the moment had passed and she couldn't do anything about it anymore. She never took action. She never like stepped in and did anything meaningful to save anyone or help anyone. On the contrary, all she did was, as I said earlier, she followed direction in these moments and she did the wrong thing consistently, every time, while thinking that it was wrong and while thinking that she shouldn't do it, but she still did it every time. And here I'm just sitting like, girl, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, you've been set up as this like troublemaker and like rule breaker, so why don't you go and follow that description once? Please, just once. Two, why do you keep thinking things and never doing things? It is infuriating. And three, which I haven't really touched upon yet, but in this world, the Bells are pretty much the only people with magical ability. She once points out that it's not magic, and then the next sentence says, the power's in our blood, and I'm like, well, then how is it not magic? It's, it's magic, okay? You can say what you want about it, but you can do magical things. You look at people, you do things to them, and then they transform. Like, that's magic. <laughs> that's pretty much the standard textbook definition of magic. So yeah, first of all, that was bullshit. So yes, they do have magic. And because Camellia is the main character, obviously she has the most magic, right? She is the strongest out of all the bells. No one is surprised. <laughs> this is a tiny spoiler, but I don't think you'll care. Uh, she can actually, she actually finds out that Bells can potentially have the ability to even stop a heart at a distance, okay? Just keep that in mind. However, <laughs> again coming back to the situations where she witnesses something unjust or things are being done, sometimes even to herself, and never once, never once, does she act and use her actual magical power to do anything? This goes beyond naivete for me. That is just pure, I don't know, timidity, laziness, stupidity, I don't know, or like just bad writing. Because to me, it felt so unrealistic. 
Genuinely, <laughs> there's lots of people bullying Camellia throughout the book, particularly members of the royal court, and I understand, yes, these are like queen kings and queens and whatever, and princes and princesses, they are going to have power over you as they should. But when it comes down to it, when it's a make or break, live or die situation, why don't you use your magical powers to do something genuinely so frustrating i don't know i'm running out of words to describe how frustrating that was so i guess it's no surprise that another thing that bothered me is that camellia never really took any actions all she ever did was she reacted to things that happened in the story um things would happen to her people would come to her and she would never out of her own like initiative do anything. Yes, she would sit there and plot and make plans and be like, I need to change something, I need to save the world, whatever, la di da. But she never, never took any action. Especially since this book is already following a very standard YA sort of uh, plot line where like there's one person that like wants to change the world because it has so many, there's so many things going wrong and this person needs to change the world, but she's not even doing anything. Like, uh, if you're gonna follow all their stereotypes, at least do them right, please. On top of that, there was also like a semi-random love triangle in this, or like half of a love triangle. It was really indistinguishable and it was really odd. Uh, the only reason I'm even calling it a love triangle is because the girl, Camellia, knows two guys. And they have names and they reappear in the story, like... And yeah, I mean, I guess you can tell <laughs> if you've come this far in the video that I was very disappointed with the book. I think, again, it could have been taken much further. Further? <laughs> again, I think it could have been taken much further and most importantly, it should have been developed better. If you're gonna create a world like this, I mean, I don't know why I needed to be pink, but sure. Um, but if you're gonna create a world, I need that to be developed. I know that YA books are often a little bit lacking on world building because they focus more on characters and that's okay sometimes but I think if you're gonna write a fantasy you still need to put a lot more time into that and you need to not just focus on like the outward appearance I want to know more of how things actually work especially if you're gonna develop a system like the ones with the bells that is clearly at the focal point of the story. I need more on that. Like, I don't care about the appearance of their dresses. I just wanna know how the system functions so that I have a fuller understanding of the world and can appreciate all of the events happening and sort of realize all their implications a lot easier. There were other little things that I got kind of hung up on when reading the book that raised my eyebrows where I was like, how does this how is it? Mm. For example, this is an entire kingdom that apparently revolves around people looking pretty and beautiful. And that's really kind of all that they're ever talking about and all that they're focusing on. And I was just thinking like, is there nothing, nothing more important in happening in this kingdom than people changing their trends, like, like their appearance and whatever? Like, what about politics like actual politics what about relationships to other countries i understand that's not the point of the book but i kept thinking about it and i couldn't turn off my brain and i also kept thinking about things like what about men this all revolves around women looking pretty and women um tr like striving to be beautiful and there's like a few cases of men actually going and getting beauty treatments but it seemed a lot less prominent it seemed a lot less pressure was on them and I understand that's probably also maybe intentional to like reflect our society. I feel like because there was so little on that I kept thinking in that direction because we saw so few men actually going and getting treatments. Another thing I kept thinking about is that beauty is subjective, we know this and in the book everybody seems to be, I mean everybody strives for like different body types and hair colors and lengths and whatever and facial features but still all of those things are still encompassed in like a very standardized or standard idea of beauty and one that's like applicable to our society in a lot of ways. But I just kept thinking in a society where everyone is born like with red eyes and gray hair and gray skin, I'm just spitballing here, but wouldn't there maybe develop a new beauty ideal that 
encompasses all those things. Wouldn't there also be some sort of like a counter movement of like naturalists or people trying to make the best of the natural shape and hair and color and whatever? I don't know. I, again, it's not pertinent to the actual story and it's a little thing, but I just kept thinking of it and my brain kept getting hung up on it and I was like, oh, but what? What about this and what about that and why not this? And I just, <laughs> it just kept taking me out of the story because again, I feel like the world wasn't developed enough and so there were too many black holes for me to fall into of like questioning things and thinking about things that I wasn't supposed to think about. I ended up giving this book two stars. I really wanted to give it more, but I couldn't because it was not good in my opinion. The execution was really lackluster, it was not original in plot, in characters, it was original in the premise, but again, because that wasn't explored enough in my opinion, I just couldn't gel with it enough to like, you know, compensate for the other shortcomings that I found with it. And that is it for this book review of The Bells by Donald Clayton. Hope you guys enjoyed it, found it informative, and I would love to know your opinions on this book if you've already read it. Please leave them in the comments down below, and also please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday, and I will see you then with another one. Have a lovely week. Bye!